Welcome to the Riot Podcast, where we have practical discussions on how to share your faith, see the news from God's eyes, and answer some of faith's hardest questions. Welcome to the Riot Podcast. How are you guys out there today? I am Bob Shoneman, along with my co-host, Pete Robertson. What's up, gentlemen? And Barry Rice. Hey, everybody. Guys, it's April 1st, 2021. Can you believe that? Oh, what are we going to do as far as April Fool's Day? I don't know. Are we going to pay a joke? No, I don't think so. I think we should talk about... There's more lies on April 1st than any other day of the year. (laughs) There you go. Have you ever done that? No. April Fool's jokes? Yeah. Yeah, when I was a kid, we used to do that just crazy stuff all the time. One time my son comes home and he says that he got suspended from school and I forget what he did, but he did something like completely crazy. And then he made up like this yellow sheet of paper or something. He made it like really authentic. Like he brought it home that I had to sign it and whatever. And wow, um, he made his own nasty note. Yeah, he did something. <laughs> yeah, I forget the whole details of it, but it was something. And um, man, I was just getting cr- mad. I couldn't believe he made that decision. I was getting so upset. And he's like, April Fools. And so he got me. Your son has a sense of humor. Oh, he is hilarious. What about you, Barry? You guys ever do on the farm? Do you do, a, do, you do April Fools jokes when you were a kid? We did. I, I can't remember anything that happened, but. Uh... You know, we we would do that. Uh, and the same thing with St. Patrick's Day about the green pinch people. You right. Know, all that stuff that kind of happens around this time of year. But uh, you know what? Uh, the empty tomb was no April Fool's joke. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, we're not joking about that, are we? No, sir. We are going into Easter weekend, aren't we? Good yep. Friday tomorrow, yeah. Easter He's on not Sunday. Here. We yep. got lots of good stuff to talk. Speaking of Easter... What is your favorite Easter candy? Oh, that's and easy. Is it? Yes. I was going to give you choices if you couldn't think, but if it's easy, just go for it. Oh, it's the Reese's peanut butter cup. I egg. told you. I yeah, that's that's mine too. The Cadbury's too sweet. Yes. Yes, 100% agree. Anything with chocolate, peanut butter, it's own like popcorn. See, that's why we, we get along so well. Yeah, I love that too. That is absolutely my favorite. I went to Walmart the other day looking for it, and they didn't have it. They didn't have any of the Cadbury's. They didn't have any of that. Oh, they just had brothers. like the old school I peanut butter. I found some of the white ones. Yeah, where is that? Yeah, it was at CVS. White peanut butter chocolate? Yes. Oh. oh. <laughs> That's a whole new level. I hear the white chocolate's like a byproduct or something. It's not that healthy, but whatever. Well, it's not even really chocolate. It's not? It's not. <laughs> oh, it just tastes like it. I don't know. That's but another show. So we'll good. talk about the it temple of new... God and, and our bodies and stuff. Yeah, kind of back to our COVID <laughs> vaccine show, right? Should you put that in your body? <laughs> I don't know. Which is healthier? I also like jelly beans. I've always been a big fan of jelly beans. I don't know about you guys. What are those marshmallow things? Oh, the peeps? Yeah. My well, wife yeah. likes those. She likes the marshmallows? It's, man, there's like, people either hate those things or they love them. There's like no in middle ground there. Yeah, I don't I know what I I still have never tried one and For don't real? know what it's all about. Don't care. Are you serious? You've never had a peep? No. I, I, I wouldn't even give a peep about that <laughs> <laughs> i well, think the peeps used to be yellow but now they're all creative they're they have all blue different colors. and pink yep. and they have yep. all the different colors just to my try wife likes more. the purple ones i don't know yeah. that they taste any different i think just purple's her favorite color so peeps purple peeps oh my goodness i did so, i built an app once called peeps so if anybody's out there that's listening you want to find an app called <laughs> peeps <laughs> we built an app called peeps well that's enough about candy <laughs> Can we get into the real reason of Easter? Or yeah. we, before we do that, it's we'll eggs, talk, let's right? talk about your week. No, it's not eggs. I knew- <laughs> Isn't it about a bunny? Well, how do you feel about that, Barry? About Easter eggs and bunnies? And is it a distraction? Is it a tool? How, you know, what is it? It's dumb. It's dumb. <laughs> it's dumb. <laughs> Should people leave a church if churches do Easter egg hunts? I've heard of people doing it. Yeah. Hey, but maybe it's not dumb. If you can use an egg to bring people to church and get them to hear the gospel, well, it's not dumb. How is that? Yeah. I would give away bunnies if people would come to church. And (laughs) I mean, think about it. When Paul said, when in Rome, you're as a Rome. So he has to adjust to that custom. When he was in Greece, he adjusted to that custom. And, And it's the same difference. Here we are in our environment. I really believe that 
if you're going to do an Easter egg hunt or you're going to do something that's going to attract families to the church to help them hear the gospel, I don't know why not. You're not sinning. You're not doing anything. It's, it's not like that. Uh, giving out beer, alcohol. Or, yeah, we're not doing that. I, I was going to hesitate and not say this, but to use a stripper to, to right. reach for your men's right. ministry. You don't do that. Yeah, we're not going to do that. We're drawing. We're doing something in a very innocent way. Yeah. A chicken I'm not and an egg. I'm hundred percent sure what I just heard, but I, I'm just going to let it go. I'm we're saying we're not go. going to the vulgar, evil, sinful side. We're in a very innocent side yes. that's going to help bring people to Jesus. So having kids do an Easter egg hunt isn't sin. So if it's bringing people to Jesus, then yeah, do what it takes. Yeah. So what do you say to the people and? And I know we've experienced this in the past, Pete, where somebody's like, well, I'm leaving the church because you're doing Easter eggs. What do you, you know, how do you, how do you talk to people like that? Or how do you, uh, in love, tell them, you know, how, well, it's where, a you, whole, where you're it's coming from? It's a whole other show on legalism and where people you are, you know, there's a legalistic side of that. And we'll do another show just based off of that. But it will just probably leave that alone right now. All right. I well, would say, here's your hat. What's your hurry? Yeah. <laughs> say that again? Here's your hat. What's your hurry? <laughs> oh, my. Um, now, think about it. it no, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about this. If, if, if people don't love other people and they just want to be a stick in the mud about something that really doesn't mount a hill of beans, then come on, man. I agree. That's good. Yeah. I mean, there's, we just, there's, we get, we get to open up a lot. It just doesn't matter. (laughs) It's people who want to fight. Yeah. And if people have an edge that they want to be right and they just want to fight, then they're not helping the kingdom of God. No. That's good. (laughs) We're not getting into the letter I got this week. It's (laughs) (laughs) Some people just aren't happy unless they're unhappy, unfortunately. Yeah. There's a lot of negative people out there. Yeah. And they look at everything negatively and, and it's just, it's not going to, it's not healthy no. and you don't want, and people don't want to be around you either. That's the other thing. If you're just negative and whatever, I mean, you're not going to get a lot of friends. You'll have some, but that are going to join you in the negative gossip, but yeah, you don't want to be around people yeah. that are just sucking the joy out of you. Yeah. That's for but sure. But it kind of leads to that. Right. And so you're just like, Oh, the worship's too bad. Or the pastor should have said this, or man, did you see how those people were addressed at church? Or man, I wasn't greeted at the front door because they didn't smile at me or they didn't even offer coffee. I mean, I can't believe you went to a church and didn't offer coffee. Or, how do you have a church without a coffee bar? Right. The children's ministry guy didn't even dress up or he didn't have this. I mean, they can go on and on and on and we just like stop people uh, please the, the music's too loud please you don't do hymns anymore yeah uh yeah we well we got this show title guys yeah, right. i on. know we got some <laughs> serious stuff to talk forever. about right <laughs> this is a serious week right I, yeah. it's it's an awesome week it's a big deal the, our, our title is what significance does the resurrection of jesus have for your life and pete you know before we jump into this i think especially after our last five minutes of discussion of jelly beans and and uh music being too loud would you mind open us up in uh, in a prayer to yeah. kind of set the tone and, That's so awesome. and reset our reset our tone thank yeah, you yeah pray for me because i'm right? mad y'all talking about people <laughs> leaving the church <laughs> Lord, you are good and you are faithful and you are true. And Lord, we just want to surrender this show to you. We want to surrender all the people that are hearing this show. Lord, we want you glorified. We want your truth spoken. And so, Lord, remove any obstacles, remove anything that might uh, cloud what we're going to say. Lord, help your spirit reign here. Help it just invade every aspect of each of our lives. Lord, you are so good, and we want you to be resurrected in our lives today. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pete. Well, the resurrection of Jesus Christ is a central truth to our Christian faith. And without it, there is no such thing as Christian faith. Amen. Is that true? Amen. Absolutely. So what happens if there's no resurrection? Uh, that's not good. We're going to talk about that. We are going to talk about that? <laughs> I want to jump. I, I do want to read a verse Live to you guys. however you want if there is no resurrection. That's it. Yeah. What would be the point, right? Yeah. yeah. Dog eat dog world, baby. And he who dies with the most toys wins? That's it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Whatever you want goes. 
But I'm no going to argue that the resurrection did happen. Ooh. Let's okay. read. Um, let's read Philippians three ten and eleven in the Amplified version. This I, I just love the extra descriptions and kind of the definitions of terms as we read through this. It says, "And this, so that I may know Him experientially, becoming more thoroughly acquainted with Him." understanding the remarkable wonders of his person more completely and in that same way experience the power of his resurrection which overflows and is active in believers and that i may share the fellowship of his sufferings by being continually conformed inwardly into his likeness even to his death dying as he did also that i may attain to the resurrection that will raise me from the dead. Mm. Wow. Dude, what a powerful statement mm. that Paul is making right there. there. That is saying, all right, this is why I exist. This is what my life is all about. And in, in the uh, classic amplified version, it says that the power which is exerted over every believer, the resurrectional power, that's exerted over every believer. Are you kidding me? Hmm. You're telling me that the power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is the power I have to tap into? Oh. The greatest historical event that's ever happened in all of time is when God said, boy, come home, hmm. come forth. You know, Jesus foreshadowed that, right? When he said, Lazarus, come forth. When he uh, uh, raised Lazarus from the dead, can you imagine the father saying, I'm home, boy. Mm. Good job. Mm. Oh, my goodness. And Jesus resurrecting from the grave is the greatest historical event that has ever happened. Mm. And if it didn't happen, uh, we're lost. Yeah. We, we have no hope. And. And I really believe that a big part of this exerting that power is the power of the Holy Spirit in our life. And we'll get to that. What do you think, Pete? Well, John Stott said the resurrection of Jesus changes the faith of death for all his people. Death is no longer a prison, but a passage into God's presence. Easter says you can put truth in the grave, but it won't stay there. So I was just thinking wow. when he said that. Yeah, That's good, it's, man. It's powerful, right? Truth in the grave. Yeah, so it's like it's it's with us because we believe in the truth, we now are able to have a resurrected life because of what Jesus did. And we're going to talk about a little bit of of that the great that the tomb is empty and and how we can sh prove that it's historically there's more to prove that than we can prove uh, say that Julius Caesar lived or more that you know Alexander the Great lived that that the, it is verifiably fact that Jesus rose from the grave and so it's it's something that we can put in but now let's just try to talk about through this show the power of the resurrection for a believer's life and what that does for us and how does that set us free how does that bring life into us when we were once dead and lost you know, you know what we're not going to say is the resurrection happened because the bible says so <laughs> you know for believers that's okay but that won't fly anywhere in any audience of non-believers mm. so i'm so thankful that the resurrection is is proven by extra extra biblical uh <laughs> references it is man i mean if if anybody has done a deep dive search to kind of find when we our original manuscripts and i would encourage any of you that's listening don't just take our word for it you really do do your own study on this but they we have records that are right up like in the first century of actual particles or pieces of these actual letters that took place and and if you start researching what are the odds of that happening or having that truth so close to in time it's it's uh, virtually impossible 
possible. I mean, Julius Caesar, we have stuff, and Alexander Great, like we were just talking about, that's later in time. It doesn't even go back as far as the Bible. Or you look at um, uh, just the Dead Sea Scrolls proves, you know, just when we found the Qumran Scrolls, where it shows that that was written in the time of Jesus, how we still have that same gospel. That just proves even then that, you know, we found that in the 50s or the 40s or something that... And uh, so the resurrection is verifiably fact, it's true, and it is transformational. And uh, we just want to really just dive into that and talk about it. This is a huge topic that we, for Christians, um, to live, uh, to talk about. And uh, so let's just get into it, Bobalicious. <laughs> well, where do you want to go to next? I mean, you just threw a bunch of stuff at us, Pete. Well, um, well, Job 14, 4 says, if, per yeah. if a person dies, will they live again? So here's Job. Okay. They say, they believe that this is what the oldest book in the Bible, right? Some people say this is the oldest written book. So Job is saying, okay, if someone dies, where do they go? He's asking that question. And there's a lot of people that are out there that are asking that same question. If I were to die, where am I going? What's next? And, and I think we just talked about this in the show before that it, you just go into nothing. What were you saying about that, Barry? Yeah. <clears throat> Some people believe that you go into a eternal state of nothingness and sleep. So you just cease to exist. Yeah. You become worm food. But, you know, I think this is the biggest fear that every person faced. They fear dying. Yeah. And, and, uh, when you get around people who are older and experiencing that they're going to see people in nursing home they are absolutely blown away by that fear what's going to happen because it's so evident you talk to younger kids they're not even thinking about it they think they're going to live forever but but it is the biggest fear in all humanity and what what happens when i die what happens uh, to me and in my personality my family will i ever see them again yeah, because of this, because of the resurrection, Paul told us that we no longer fear the sting of death. Mm, because of the yeah. resurrection, we no longer fear what is to come. Because it says, the Bible says that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. <laughs> That's a hope alert right there. Come That's on, man. <laughs> That, that right amazing. there was a hope alert. Yeah. A hope alert. Yeah, yeah, man. We can have hope. Yeah. Because he overcame death and the grave yeah. and the everything that we fear. Yeah. And he says, if I live, you will live also. That's yeah. what you were saying, Pete. Yeah. It was like Muhammad, when you study the Muslim faith and <laughs> maybe I shouldn't have even said that because we might get flagged now. But be if you study that and you understand what Muhammad was teaching, there's no guarantee. Allah does not guarantee salvation. The, the closest that you can get guaranteed to salvation is if you do like a jihad or something where you can get 72 virgins and you might be able to get into heaven. You might be able to. It's, it's all his will. You know, he's going to look at your life and evaluate your life. If you did the good works, if you did the things that are right, then if it's all his will that you would give, get into heaven. Heaven. with with the hindus it's like you have to live a certain nirvana kind of life for the buddha to be able to be reincarnated so you might if you 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 know if you're in human form it's because you lived a good life as a as a animal or or something else in your past life and then if you do something right then you might be elevated up into the the hierarchy of heaven or so forth well, the Bible doesn't teach that. The Bible teaches in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It teaches that God, fully man, came, lived on this earth, lived the perfect life, a holy life, and then he died for our sins so that we can have eternal life, that we can have life after this life. And so it, it now changes everything in us. And so where we were before, where we had hopelessness or we didn't know if where we die or if, if we even believe in any of that, now we can know for certain that we can live with God, a good God for all eternity. And it's, and it changes our lifestyle. It changes our character. It changes our personality. It changes uh, the hope that we have, as you were saying, Barry, where we now have life. We now have peace. We now have comfort. We now have the things that we no longer could have certainty of because they were all, you know, they could become fleeting. They're only for a moment, but with Jesus, they're eternal. They're always everlasting. And so that's kind of where I see the resurrection. Do you think it's because we as humans, we focus, we're just focused on the flesh and we forget 
too often that we're, we're more than just that, right? We're mind, body, and soul. And I think the, the spirit part is the part that we're, we forget so easily. And you're talking about people being fearful of dying. I remember, and as we're coming into Good Friday, uh, my mother died um, two years ago on Good Friday. And there was, there was apprehension about the process, but there was no fear in, in dying. In fact, she was looking forward to seeing her Savior. Wow, and what a testimony. It, it, was, it was just an amazing, and I think I've told you guys a story before. Um, she, she died on Good Friday. It was the middle of the afternoon, like 3 o'clock in the afternoon. The storm, her hospital room was looking over the water, and the storm came blowing in over, the, over Indian River towards the hospital, huh. and she passed right at that time. Oh, yeah, yeah, you did tell me that. It was just amazing. It was just like God just saying, look, I'm real. Here it is. Mm. And I, I, so going back to my original point, I think when we're fearful as people, we're fearful because we're only focused on the flesh and we forget that that's, that's not who we are, that this is just a temporary, uh, a shell, a tent, right? And uh, our eternal souls, um, that's what we're talking about here. That's the living forever. And uh, I think maybe that's part of our problem is we forget that. If you don't know me, I'm a pretty big guy and I love sitting on the aisle in an airplane Yeah, because the people that sit beside the window and the people that sit in the middle, they're stuck. I got them. <laughs> and I asked them, uh, are you going to heaven? And you know, the number one answer I get, I get, I hope so. I hope so. Yep. Yeah. What? In first <clears throat> John five thirteen, uh, John writes and he said, these things have I written unto you so that you may know that you have yeah. eternal life. Yeah. We can know that the resurrection happened and we can know that we will be resurrected because Jesus was resurrected and he said, I am the resurrection, right? Yeah. Right. Come on now. Yeah. Yeah. Re John eleven twenty five says, I am the resurrection and life. Whoever believes in me, though he die yet, shall he live. That's Wait, a promise. How can you die and live? Yeah, that's the point, right? Yeah, that's the point. It's because he rose from the grave, we can now live for all eternity. But the opposite is true as well. That the opposite of life is death. And, and, and without the resurrection life, we have eternal death. And so that's another thing that the reason why people fear is because of the unknown. They're fearing that what if the Bible is true? What if what I've heard my whole life and I'm going to live in hell for all eternity? Because that is what it's saying. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man gets to the Father but through me. And the way that we can get to the Father is because Jesus rose from the grave. And now we can, the Bible says, have direct access with the Father. We can come boldly into his throne room. We can make our requests known to God. Amen. And so this is, this is a big deal. This is, this is no, we now have direct access because of the resurrection of Jesus to the Father. And God says, ask anything in my name and I will grant it. It, he gives us the petition to request everything unto him and that he as our father will will listen to our prayers will bless us and, and provide for us and give to us this doesn't happen without the resurrection we don't have this power this authority and so it is a big deal i mean this is something that when jesus says he's the resurrection of life at the time the disciples had no idea what he's talking about they're like what the heck are you talking about right they didn't know that until the Pentecost. They didn't, they didn't fully comprehend this mosaic that Jesus was posting out. They mm. didn't understand that. But when the Pentecost took place, the Spirit of God invaded their life. The eyes were open and they yeah. were like, aha, they got it. They saw it. They were so empowered that Peter could not wait but to preach. And he went out and 3,000 people, he preached the resurrection of Jesus. 3,000 people came to the know the Lord. And immediately, right at that very moment, because they got it, they saw the resurrection of Jesus brought life. The resurrection of Jesus was a big deal. Sure was. So, so what makes us think that 
Jesus resurrected from the grave? What are the things that make us think that? Well, you know, one thing that just came to my mind is, is man, I love listening to you guys talk. First of all, I, <laughs> I lose my train of thought because I'm like diving in. I'm like, wow. But here's what I was thinking. And to answer your question, Barry, the example of Peter tells me that the resurrection was real, right? Mm. Peter was cowering by a fire at the crucifixion who spent three years with Jesus, but denied him to a, to a little girl, to a servant girl, right? He was it, this it, little- If I could crow timid. right now, it'd be the perfect time to do it, right? Yeah. To what? cock a doodle do. Right. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. Um, so, I mean, and then you, you advance, what, 52 days or whatever, and he's preaching to uh, you know on the colonnade steps in jerusalem and thousands of people are hearing the message and coming i mean he's with boldness knowing that he could be crucified himself for for standing up to it what a difference what what makes somebody change that much overnight in, in, yeah. in acts chapter two and x i think it's either four or nine something like that that's exactly what Peter did. He preached. And I think some of the people that crucified Jesus was there. Some of the leaders, some of the Sadducees and yeah. Pharisees. And he says, whom you, yeah. and he points a finger. Yeah. I really see it that yeah. way. Yeah. He points a finger and says, you crucified That's him. right. But God raised him from the dead. Well, yeah. and how many, I wonder how many of those people that are in the crowd there were the same people that were yelling, crucify him, crucify yeah. him. Wow. wow. Yeah. The resurrected Jesus gives us boldness, right? I mean, yes. the Bible was talking about Acts, Acts, what is it, 14 or whatever, where it says that they turned the world upside down. He said, who are those guys? Who are those unlearned fools, right? Mm. Who are those fishermen that have no idea? <laughs> and then they say, oh, yeah, they're the ones that have been with Jesus. Yeah. And the resurrected Jesus brings the Holy Spirit to live within us, and it transforms our lives. We become new creations in Christ. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have now been made new because of the resurrection of Jesus. We now have... Uh, a a direct invitation into the almighty God. We now have direct communication with the, the person that knows everything, the person that has all wisdom, the person that has all knowledge. We now have direct access to all of that. And so we then become transformed by the resurrection of the power. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so now we speak in a different language. We act in a different way. We think in a different way. We talk with a different voice. Peter talked with authority because he knew without a shadow of a doubt that everything that he is saying is truth. He knows that everything that is happening right now in his life is empowered by the Holy Spirit because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And it, so that's just Peter. Yeah. <laughs> what other examples do we have? Well, look at Paul. Yeah. I mean, Paul's in, in prison. Paul's in Philippi, right? Paul's sitting there getting ready to be beaten to death. Actually, he just was beaten almost to death. Now he's in prison. There's an earthquake. There's the, his chains are broken and the, the, the guards are freaking out and they're saying, oh my gosh, he's going to kill himself. And Paul's like, dude, stop. Don't worry about it. He's in a, in, a, in a frame of worship. He's worshiping God at this moment. He's not fearful. He's not worried. He's not stressed. He knows that God is inside of him, giving him a purpose to, to share this life, this resurrection life with the guard. He's looking at everything as an opportunity now. He's looking at the, the, everything that he does in his life to bring this resurrection Jesus to life in other people's life. He wants everybody to have hope. And this Paul you're speaking of, this is the same guy that Saul that was killing Christians yeah. before he met Jesus, yeah, right? there you go. Yeah, yeah you don't, it, that doesn't happen, right? It Resurrection doesn't. life makes that happen. Yeah, he was the upcoming president of the Sadducees <laughs> <laughs> and the Pharisees. Yeah. Well, actually, he was a Pharisee, right? So he was the upcoming president, and he was persecuting Christians, and... He got a resurrectional, post-resurrectional appearance of Jesus and asked him, why are you persecuting me? Here, 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 tell it to my face type of thing, Jesus was saying. And God, Jesus blinded him. To, to use it as an illustration that religious people, a couple shows back, are blinded. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he heard the voice of the, the resurrected Messiah and it changed everything everything for him and he wrote most of the new testament right but but guys there's also a problem that has to be dealt with right they the the one pharaoh i mean the uh 
the uh, the governor who who allowed Jesus to be crucified, he had a major problem to mm. deal with because the tomb was empty. Yeah, a several hundred, maybe even thousand pound rock was rolled away. Yeah, and and these soldiers, their life was on the was on the stake. Right? Yeah. I mean they they were put there with the the seal of the governor to to for no one to touch this mess with it but it was broken yeah and the and the stone was rolled away and and jesus was not there yeah the jews were trying to say that oh the the disciples or his disciples took the body but the problem they had was jesus appeared to the disciples the problem they had is he appeared to over 500 people at one time and they saw him ascend into heaven and and if it was fake there would be just as much literature out there writing to rebuke what the disciples were saying. There would be just as many people saying that that was not true at the time, but they cannot prove it. They, the, there's too many people saying that this is true. We saw Jesus with our own eyes. I mean, the Paul's, I mean, the resurrection is mentioned over a hundred times in the New Testament alone. The apostles were constantly bringing reference to the resurrection. They understood the significance of it. They even understood it to the point of death. Think about it. They, they died a martyr's death believing in the yeah. resurrection of Jesus. Here, I just I have a few of them right here. So Peter and Paul, they both were martyred in Rome about 66 AD. So there was during the emperor Nero, Paul was beheaded. Peter was crucified upside down at his request. But we have historical documents that are showing this. Andrew uh, was uh, in the Soviet Union when he died. And he, he, was, um, he preached in Asia Minor, modern day Turkey and Greece, where he was then crucified. And then Thomas, he probably went to Syria, maybe down into uh, India. There's, there's a place in India that, that gives a, a monument to Thomas there, saying that he came there. But he died when, when pierced through the spear of four soldiers. There's actual historical document showing how he died because of his faith. Philip was in Asia Minor, and he was arrested and cruelly put to death. Matthew was, a, uh, was in Persia and Ethiopia, that reports say, and, and that he was not martyred while others were stabbed to death. But he, they don't know exactly how he died, but he, died, he had to deal with a lot of persecution. Bartholomew was a missionary to, uh, with Thomas to India, Armenia, Ethiopia, and uh, he met his death as a martyr for the gospel. They don't know exactly, but they know he died because of his faith. James the son of Alphaeus, uh, um, he, he's the, he was, uh, let's see, he was ministering in, in Syria. He was uh, the Jewish historian Josephus reported that he was stoned and clubbed to death. And so all of these disciples, all of these people that were there at Pentecost, that, that the spirit of God moved in them, they died for their, for their faith. They died for uh, believing in this resurrection of life. Yeah, people Who does do that? not die no. for a lie. No. And especially maybe one or two, but not all of the disciples. They, there there would have been another uh, Judas in there, right? I mean, if yeah. they didn't see him with his eye, there's no way all of those disciples would have died. And what an incredible amount of evidence. And, you know, Jesus, before he died, said he was going to raise again. Yeah. And, you know, the, at one point, he told the Pharisees, yeah, destroy this house and see if I won't build it in right. three days. He even give, gave the, the time frame that he would be resurrected. Yeah. So that's unbelievable. I mean, it's just crazy that, you know, a man says, you kill me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back to life. And he does it. Yeah. I'm going to follow that guy like Andy Stanley says, right? Yeah. That's the guy I'm going to follow. Right. Right. Yeah. John MacArthur said, liars always lie for selfish reasons. If they lied... Was their, what was their motive? What did they get out of it? What, did they, what they got out of it was a misunderstanding, rejection, persecution, torture, and martyrdom. <laughs> Hardly a list of perks. That's exactly what I was just thinking. I'm like, okay, so let's, let's go down that, that line of thought that they were all lying, right? right? What is the benefit to them to lying? It's like, were they, you know, did they have groupies come in or, you know, they they were risking death by saying this, by saying they were part of the way. They were setting themselves up to be ridiculed, persecuted, and even executed. And in fact, I mean, like Pete just read the list of 
I mean, every one of the disciples, with the exception of John, was was killed for his belief in Jesus, right? And for for testifying. Am I right? No, you're Is right. right? I mean, it's just nobody. And Barry just said nobody's going to go to the. You know, these people aren't going to go to their death for a lie, especially but, all of them. But before the Holy Spirit, they would they didn't even go to the crucifixion because right. they were scared. Right. John was the only one that right. even went right. to the and cross, his, right? And, and Jesus' mother and Magdalene. But anyway, uh, and and then what did they do? They went into hiding. Yeah. They went fishing. They went That's they right. went back, back to Galilee. Right? Yeah. The these guys, <laughs> honestly, they were a lot like me, just a bunch of cowards, yeah. right? Yeah. And yeah. man, crazy. But after they received the Holy Spirit, well, let me back up. After they saw Jesus resurrected and Thomas stuck his finger in the holes and <laughs> yeah. and he's walking through doors and, and then they they get filled with the Holy Spirit, these become bold warriors. Yeah. And Acts one eight says it, but you will receive power, mm. power of the resurrection. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witness. Yeah, my my testimony. So talking about that, the, the word of our testimony is what we have. And my testimony is I was at the end of myself, if you want to call that. I was at the end of the ropes. And and in that moment of despair, in that agony that I was going through, in that time that I felt like all hope was lost, where all I can think about was myself and my problems, the pain that I was going through and all of that, in that brokenness, the Spirit of God came upon me. His love overwhelmed me. And in that moment of darkness, he brought light. In that moment of despair, he brought me hope. In that moment of feeling unloved, he brought me love. And, and in that is what changed me. And, it, and I had to come to terms with this. Either the resurrection of Jesus is real or it's a lie. And in that moment, when I experienced the goodness of God in a supernatural way, I was changed. I became transformed. I became a new creation in Christ. I accepted that God is who he says he is. I accepted him, his son as, as my savior and I became different. And, and, and ever since that day, I have not stopped running to learn about him, to, 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 to know more about him, to allow him to continue to change all of my bad habits, to allow him to continue to take care of all of my worries and my fears. And he has never let me down. He has always been faithful. He has always been true. And that is my testimony. And there's nothing anybody can take that from me. And if that means that I'm going to tell that until somebody wants to persecute me and kill me, then so be it. I will say it loudly and proudly. And that's one of the reasons why we're doing this podcast. We are not ashamed of the gospel of Amen. Jesus Christ. We are not ashamed of the power that he has given. We're not ashamed of the love that he has shared with us. We will share this loudly to the world until someone takes it away from us. So help us, God. Ooh, come good, on, good. Pete. Pete fired up today. Yeah. But that's true. That really piggybacks well off our episode from last week. Yeah. You know, uh, you may not know all the scriptures. You may not have them all memorized. You may not have the Romans road down. But I'm going to tell you what. You have your story of life change and transformation. And nobody can argue about that. So why don't you, Bob, would you give us that 1 Corinthians 15 passage? Yeah, I would love to. So 1 Corinthians 15, 12 through 19 says, Now if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection in the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain. Your faith is also in vain. Moreover, we are even found to be false witnesses of God because we witnessed against God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is worthless. Worthless. You are still in your sin. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If we have hoped in Christ in this life only, we are all, we are of all, I can't say it, we are of all people. 
most to be pitied. See, it's so sad I couldn't even spit that out. If, so if that were true, that's pathetic. That, that's it's, it's, it's pathetic. Yeah. I thought Ooh. of uh, Mr. T and A Team. Pity the fool. Pity I don't the know. fool. <laughs> hey guys, really though, if what what that passage is saying, if if the resurrection didn't happen, we have no faith. There's no Christianity. We, we no have hope. nothing to have faith yeah. in, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, it goes on to say that if he did not resurrect you from the grave, there is no consequences to sin. There is no hell. There is no heaven. Party. This is all you get. That's right. And so, you know, by the evidence uh, of the disciples, by the evidence of the empty tomb, by the evidence of Pete's life change and Ooh. our life change, it is unanimous. It is overwhelming. There is hope and we will live with him for all of eternity. Well, gee, I mean, he told us he was going to do it, right? He told us he was going to rise. And I've heard it said, you know, Jesus is either a liar, a lunatic, or he's Lord. Yeah. He can't be all three, right? No way. No way. Yeah, I was. it was uh, Anathasius. He said, Jesus' resurrection is the beginning of God's new project, not to snatch people away from earth to heaven, but to colonize earth with the life of heaven. That, after all, is what the Lord's Prayer is about. Think about that statement. So when Jesus came, he now gives us life here on earth. And that life here on earth, we want to share with other people. And because of that, then they can have eternal life for all eternity. Um, Josh McDowell says, let the resurrection joy lift us from loneliness and weakness and despair to strength and beauty and happiness. And so there's people out there right now that might be lonely. There's people out there right now that might be weak. They might be in despair. They might be lacking strength. There's people out there that are in anxiety. And if they can fully grasp what we're saying right now, that the resurrection of Jesus can take all of that away, that they, he can bring them hope, that he can bring them life, that he can bring them love, then that would be a life-changing moment. And so there's, there's some people out there that might be, you know, looking for Jesus or they're looking for a church or they're looking for something, maybe share this podcast with them so they can hear yeah. this, you know, invite them to your local church. You know, there's people out there that, that like we were talking about last week that need this hope. They need to hear the gospel truth. And if you want to know how to share your faith, listen to our last week's episode to tips on how to share your faith. Listen to that because just take what we just shared shared and take this resurrection life that we talked about today put all of that together and go out there and talk about jesus talk about this with your friends talk about this with people that are that are um hurting um so i mean that's kind of where we're at i don't know we can probably close up with that today barry if you want to just talk to those people and and anything else that might be on your heart that that are looking for jesus that are they heard this resurrection life they heard you know as c.s lewis said a dead christ i must do everything for but a living christ does everything for me maybe they're saying i want christ to do everything for me I'm, I'm done doing life my way. I'm done trying to figure out this thing. I believe that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. I believe that he is the answer to my hopelessness, to my anxiety. Talk to those people. Well, what's coming to my heart is Pontius Pilate. He's having the conversation. These people out here want me to crucify you and flog you and kill you. And uh, are you a king? He says, I am, but this place here is not my throne. This earth is not my throne, and that is the truth. And, and Pontius Pilate asks, what is truth? The name of our podcast is Righteous Invasion of Truth. And the truth is, is that Jesus is alive. Amen. Amen. The evidence is overwhelming. Mm. And if you've been searching for the truth, of all of these different religions, I ask you to look into the empty tomb. And I'm going to tell you that that represents your heart. It's empty. And it needs to be filled with the presence of God and the power of God and the purpose of God. And if you hear 
today are hearing this podcast and you sense Jesus knocking on the door of your heart, let him in. Answer the door. Open it. And the way we do that is as simple as A, B, and C. Admit that you're a sinner that it is sin that separates you from God and he can allow sinners into heaven because he's holy. Then you must believe in God's remedy that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That Jesus came into the world to pay the penalty of sin. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life yes. through Christ Jesus, our Lord. And lastly, you must confess him. What does that mean? It doesn't mean you say, hey, I want to go to heaven. Give me the ticket. It means I believe Jesus resurrected and overcame death, the grave, Satan and sin. And I want to worship him for the rest of my life. And I wanted to serve him for the rest of my life. I want him to come inside of me and sit on the throne of my life and be my Lord. If that is you, my friend. The Bible says in Romans 10, 13, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen. And the way you call is submission, surrender by praying this would you pray this with me friend would you pray dear God I know that you have created me for a reason and that's to have a relationship with you and I am the problem my sin my choices I constantly choose things over you and I'm sorry that offends you and I am selfish and I sit on my own throne and I want you to know, God, that I believe that you love me enough to send your son to die for me and to pay the penalty of my sin. And Jesus, I just want to say thank you. And I want to say, I believe you resurrected, that you are alive and that you are the one true king and you are the rightful heir for the throne of my life. And I invite you right now into my life to save me, to lead me. And I surrender to your authority right now. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. If you pray that prayer, it's the greatest moment in your life. Congratulations. Yeah, we would love to hear from you. You know, when Martin Luther said, the cross is the victory, the resurrection is the triumph. And so the victory over sin and the resurrection is our hope. It's our triumph. And so if that is you and you uh, prayed that, go on to our website at riadpodcast.co. At the top of the page, you're going to see No God. Click on that. Go all the way down to the bottom. Click Yes, I Gave My Life to Jesus. Fill out that. We would love to hear from you. Send you some information. And uh, we love to talk with you. Bob? Yeah, guys, what a, man, just a, it's an amazing weekend, right? And I just wanted to just kind of challenge you. Um, you know, <laughs> you're watching us on Facebook or listening to us it. on the podcast. Regardless, um, man, this is just an amazing opportunity. Easter weekend, um, you you bump into people at work, your, your neighbors, your friends, you've got family members. And you know that they don't know, right? Use this opportunity. People will, they're just more open to the things of God on, on, during the Holy Week. And there's just, this is just an amazing opportunity that I don't want you to miss. So, you know, reach out to folks, invite them to church, buy them lunch, whatever it takes. But, uh, man, use this opportunity to share uh, a little bit about what we shared with you today about the resurrection so man we just uh we're just so grateful that you're here that you're listening we thank you for that we we would love for you to 
um, reach out to us on our social media, whether it be Facebook or Twitter, Instagram, all of those places you get us at the, the Riot Podcast. And uh, man, we'd really jump on. We, we, we've been utilizing YouTube a lot more over the last month, and we would love for you to jump on there and subscribe to our channel. Uh, every time we have a new uh, a new podcast come out, you'll get a little notification, and uh, it would just uh, it's also a great way to share. There's no easier way to share our podcast and the message that you hear than just hit the share button on YouTube. So please take advantage of that, Pete. Man, this has been an amazing show. We thank you, Barry. Uh, just um, amazing observations, and I just love listening to the two of you guys. Mm. And man, I just learned so much from you, and I know that uh, you, our listener, are also learning so much for the, from the wisdom that the Holy Spirit has put in these guys. So I pray that you just have an amazing Holy Week, that uh, you, uh, you know, if you have an opportunity to, um, you know, to have a worship service on, on Good Friday or on Easter, that you take advantage of that. Bring your families, uh, open up the Bible and read it to your families and just uh, just take advantage of the, the opportunity that this week gives all of us. So any final words, Pete? No, just an awesome show. God is good and he is faithful and his resurrection changes everything. Yeah. We love you guys. Have take a care. great week of worship. Thanks out. This has been The Riot Podcast. If you liked what you heard today, please feel free to leave a comment and share it with your friends. See you back here next week for another episode of The Riot Podcast.